So 15 years ago, abysmal housing loans brought the US and in turn the global economy to its knees. These bad loans destroyed the financial system as we knew it and sent the world into what we now call the Great Recession. Regulators reacted by imposing tough new lending standards at much higher capital levels. It was there to simply stop the great financial crash from ever reoccurring, even if house prices did indeed fall. But today, as the Federal Reserve raises its interest rates in an effort to soften the rampant inflation that we currently have on the global economy, new stresses are gonna appear in areas we are not even looking at. Rich Bernstein, who is a global macro manager, said that the Fed is hunting elephants with pea shooters and that they are being extraordinarily reactive and of course, something will break. In a recent Barron's article that caught my eye titled The Four Places That Could Be Trouble If The Economy Goes South, Barron's asked economists, strategists, and investors where the hidden danger may actually lurk. And of course, like I said, these are not at the forefront. They're not in our faces every single day as we talk about a recession or inflation or interest rate heights or how Joe Biden just reads a teleprompter. These are dangers that investors really need to consider that are lurking in the Dark. I think that it's logical to remember that in 2008, nobody was looking at subprime debt being thrown around and it's going to cause a great recession. Few expected this to happen and not many were actually looking at it themselves. Nick Colas over at DataTrack put it best, it's not little ripples that matter, but when they are synchronized, they can make a big tsunami. Now, of course, as it stands, we're already in a recession. Whether the US wants to admit it or not, we are pretty much in a recession. But if these other sectors that I'm about to talk about go south, then it could mean it's not just a simple recession for one or two years. Emerging markets were at the forefront of this article, which is understandable. You see, emerging economies are getting hit the hardest by inflation. With raising fuel and food costs, nations with weaker monetary policy just simply can't keep up. And as these economies are looking more and more volatile, any logical investor who's looking at lowering their exposure to equities or in turn any investment emerging markets are going to be one of the first areas they look at pulling funds from, meaning that any dip in the economy itself that is indeed emerging could last a hell of a long time, as new money is not going to instantly flow in to support the current discounted levels. Now, Eswood Prasad is a former top hand on China, said that it's a time for great peril. Although he doesn't see cascading crisis at this stage, Prasad says that countries with high levels of foreign currency debt, economic and political changes are vulnerable vulnerable as global financial conditions tighten. And I mean, we only have to look at what's happening in Sri Lanka with the political unrest, which has turned into literal chaos. You can look at Chile too, which was once a sensible and sound policy maker, is now in the middle of its own currency crisis. You can look to countries where borrowing costs have spiked in recent years, like Ukraine, Argentina, Egypt, Pakistan, and Kenya. Now, granted, most people watching this video won't have exposure to countries like Kenya, but if you look at Funds like EMBI, the JP Morgan Emerging Markets Bond Index, these indexes could see huge losses as liquidity dries up in emerging markets, especially those that have borrowed and leveraged in US dollars as the dollar strengthens. If emerging market crises begin to pile up and banks are exposed to a number of them, there could be huge troubles that eventually destabilize financial markets here in the West, which of course would add much more than just inflation stress to the already worried markets. Now, before we move on to the next aspect that's sort of flying under the radar, that is the big threat to the world economy, please do remember to smash that like button. It greatly helps me out. And what's more, it will unlock a dad joke later in the video. Now, moving on to China. There is three big issues in big China. The world's second largest economy reported its worst economical growth since the beginning of the pandemic. Hurt by harsh COVID-related lockdowns that brought cities like Shanghai to a literal standstill, economists are expecting a better than expected second half of the year for China. Instead of China helping countries like the US and regions like the EU with their current supply chain strains, China could actually do some more malice than indeed good if it did go into another lockdown. Now, the second big issue with China is actually with China and Taiwan. And I think this is one of the biggest issues the world is currently facing. And as soon as this is resolved, I will sleep a lot better at night. You see, tensions are raising between China and Taiwan and a potential conflict has been brewing for a long time. And it could get a lot worse very soon because this lady has been warned by her own government and indeed the 
Chinese government not to travel on holiday to Taiwan. But the legendary investor that is Pelosi doesn't really care and it looks like she might go there anyway. This could trigger a severe decline in the relations between the US and indeed China, which could add to more worries on inflation and supply chain. Not to mention it could literally spark a full-out Cold War or worst worst case, a full-out actual war between these two nations if the US did want to go and defend Taiwan. And the reason the US would want to defend Taiwan is because 90% of semiconductors come out of Taiwan, meaning if you don't have semiconductors, you can't make missiles, iPhones, and so on and so forth. And if this does happen and Pelosi does go to Taiwan, it's going to get much, much worse than it currently is. So Pelosi, if you are watching, do yourself a favor, get yourself to Tijuana instead, get some body shots on the go and just leap up them rewards you've made from your clear, intelligent investing. Or should I say your your husband's investing, but hey, you guys don't talk about finances at home. I get it. Now, the third and some would say the bigger issue that is literally happening right now is China's big debt crisis. The Chinese property sector owes roughly 1.6 trillion US dollar denominated debt. And as the dollar is getting stronger and stronger, this debt is getting much, much harder to pay as time goes on. Chinese citizens are now refusing to pay their mortgages on uncompleted properties, which let's be honest, sounds just fair. I mean, why would you pay for a property you can't live in? But this is igniting a widening crisis that could spill over into the Chinese banks. Analysts say that investors should exercise caution with both Chinese bonds and equities. In my opinion, China, even though I do invest there, I'm trying to caution as much as possible that it is a big economical worry given that it is the world's second largest economy. Now, the third biggest thing that could crash the US economy into the pits of hell, or indeed the world economy, is leverage loans. And I know that sounds very similar to 2008, but listen to this. Leverage loans have started to become quite popular recently as interest rates have been getting higher and higher as a way to sort of combat inflation and get better returns returns that the stock market could offer you. But leverage loans are usually given out to companies that already carry heavy debt margins. And although the leverage loan market is unlikely to send the financial system into a tailspin, it could be one of the first credit markets to pile up big losses in a recession. The market iBox USD liquid leverage loan index is already down 6% this year, but it could fall much further. Some strategists are saying that leveraged loan investors are taking too much comfort in the view that there is enough cash on balance balance sheets of indebted companies to avoid the rash defaults in a recession. Sonal Desai said that the leverage ETF market has yet been stress tested for a possible massive unwinding. And it seems that investors have flocked to funds investing in floating rate debt to get ahead of the Fed's rate hikes. Investors have poured 415 billion US dollars into these funds between January 2021 and this May, according to Morningstar. It's already seen now that the bank Bank of America recently reduced its leverage loan exposure from the 300 million US dollar mark. Citigroup brought down 126 million in the second quarter and Wells Fargo took 107 million right down due to the widening credit spreads. You see, if companies who are not sound in terms of financing could see themselves easily over leveraged from loans and it could leave some investors doing that John Travolta pause as companies start to fail from over leveraging. <laughs> And then the last one, which is something that I think is probably the biggest one that's going to affect me personally, is the huge problems that are really underrepresented in the news, what's happening here in Europe. Now, it's clear the war in Ukraine is not only hurting Europe, but Europe is probably the most affected area from it. Not only because the war is on its doorstep, but also it relies on Russian energy and it also relies on food supplies from Ukraine itself. If Russia turns off the natural gas taps for a long period, it could cause a plunge for the European region in into a deep recession that we have not seen for generations. And it's already started. Investors are already panicking out of Europe. Liquidity is already beginning to dry up in the European junk bond market. Strategists like Nick Kolas are looking for a strain in sovereign debt spreads of Greece and Italy, which are the two countries with some of the lowest credit ratings in the European region itself. Yes, it's not some Eastern Bloc country. It's Italy and Greece, two long-lasting nations that are in the worst, worst positions from all 
all the debt. And let's be honest, these countries were even struggling before the US printed so much money, before the war happened, and even before the pandemic. These countries were already close to default, and now you can imagine how bad things are. I mean, for God's sake, in Italy, you had the Prime Minister trying to resign, and then they were saying, you can't resign. It's an absolute shit show over here. Europe, in my opinion, is in an absolute world of shit, and it's probably the most underrated factor that could affect global markets right now. Despite the 22% decline in the MSCI Europe, European equities have much more room to fall. Strategists over at BlackRock Investment Institute on Monday said that they are tactically underweight European stocks. Which, let me tell you, if you look at the other analysts on Wall Street and the other hedge funds too, they are all of the same mindset. They are cutting ties with Europe. And I do not see a way Europe can get out of this big mess it's currently in, in any way in the next couple of years. Because even if Russia and Ukraine signed a peace treaty tomorrow, the problem is debt. The problem is the euro and the problem is, well, there's literally hundreds of problems. Let's just put it that way. Europe is heading for a world of pain. Now, I did promise you a dad joke for smashing the like button and I was going to tell you one on pizza, but I'll be honest, it was way too cheesy. So I'm going to tell you another one, although it's definitely not a dad joke you can tell to the kids. But if you could first help me out by going down to the comments, dropping the code word, which is crisis, it will greatly help me out. And if you want to check that video out up there, it will tell you about my thoughts on the upcoming recession and how you can protect yourself. But why does Dr. Pepper come in a bottle? Well, it's because his wife is dead. So I'll leave you to figure that out for the rest of Monday. Take care and be safe.